Hello and welcome to BAM Tracker Review and to this test session for the Kawasaki Spider 9900 Mark II. Um, I th we've, we, we've tested the Kawasaki Spider before. Um, we haven't yet established if this is uh, upgraded in terms of spec because all of the results from the testing were fairly similar um, or this is just a redesign so we're not absolutely clear on that. Um, however, we will go into our normal specification testing versus the E-Zone testing. So the overall weight of this racket, it says here it's a 3U weight racket. The E-Zone testing for this racket shows it to be a 91.5 gram racket. And that's very interesting. Actually, I'm just going to stop there for a second. Because when using this racket, the first thing that is, is I'm just not sure how this happens. I, I think it could be something to do with the shaft and the overall you know, you know, a racket is like a jigsaw. So the balance, the overall weight, the head weight, aerodynamic design of the frame all comes together to form a package. And I suppose in that formula is the secret to making the perfect racket. But it's, uh, and the perfect racket, even then, can you make a perfect racket? Everyone's style is different. Everyone likes different things. You know, it's difficult to say. But from our perspective and the way we test rackets, could you make a perfect racket? It's hard to say, but we tried the Oliver rackets recently and they are super heavy, but super quick. Just weird, just not sure how they're managing to do it. I mean, balance is clearly a factor. This felt its weight when trying, trying to uh, play with it, but I'll come to that later on in the video. Um, the balance of the racket, uh, it says here it is head heavy and the E-Zone testing shows it to be very head heavy. Um, the stiffness of the shaft, it's a stiff shaft. It says here right in front of me, medial weight, stiff shaft. And the E-Zone testing shows this to have a stiff shaft too. So what else do we need to know about this racket? So maximum string tension, like the King K9, 32 pounds maximum string tension. The It's a G1 grip on this racket. Guy handle is G1. Um, right, so product is made. The frame is made of 30 tons plus 40 tons of high modulus graphite. The shaft is made of 46 tons of high modulus graphite. Handle is wood. Grip polyurethane. And made in China. Awesome. So the design of this, so no, actually availability, availability. So um, availability has been difficult for people and that is an issue for us. So we, we don't like to review rackets that are difficult to get hold of is what is the point in reviewing them. So we will make these rackets available via our racket sale site, um, www.badminton-racket-review.com. Um, the most effective way for us to get them to people throughout Europe may be to send them directly from factory. So there may be a seven to 10 day lead time, not sure yet, but definitely available, definitely orders can be placed. This racket, we will be selling it for 99 pounds. So that's a really, really decent price for this racket. Um, now onto design. Well, I think if you've seen any of our Kawasaki reviews, you will know we think that Kawasaki are have the best designed rackets, best presented rackets. I wish we had the cover to show you that these rackets come in. They are so funky and cool and so much better than any other brand. And then you come, you open the racket and take this out and you just look at the detailing, the colors, the print quality, even the way that the shaft and the handle, uh, sorry, the head is uh, graded backwards for, for the aerodynamic you know you can feel everything is so precisely done on the head it's it's absolutely astonishing I mean the racket is all of their rackets are amazing amazing but take a look at these close-up pictures and see what you think for yourself
Okay, specifications are done. Let's go to the E zone. Okay, so before we start our E zone testing, what do you need to know about how we test our rackets? Well, first of all, we use the same shuttles, the Yonix AS30s on all tests. We string, restring all of the rackets with Yonix BG65 at 25 pounds tension. And it's the same player taking all of the shots. Right, now you have some basic understanding of how we test. Let's move on to the smash test. The smash shot that you're seeing here and for all of the rackets we've tested within Badminton Racket Reviews E-Zone, uh, we take generally six shots. We take the two highest uh, racket, uh, shuttle speeds and we average those to give us a uh, overall speed. If those two uh, if those two readings are not within a certain percentage of each other, we then retake the entire test. This shot measures the shuttle speed uh, coming off the racket head, and also if you go across to the E zone, you'll see a picture similar to the one you're looking at on the screen now, which accompanies every single racket within the E zone. So that's nearly 650 or more rackets with this kind of smash JPEG showing you the racket head speed, the shuttle speed, the distance, and the approximate repulsion of the racket. Okay, now we're going to do an E-Zone manoeuvre test. The manoeuvre shots was designed to tell us about the racket's acceleration abilities, its ability to shift from one direction to the other or shift quickly from nothing to full speed. It also tests the racket's um, aerodynamics. In this test, the player is sitting still with the racket and once the shuttle is fired, which we, and we measure the shuttle speed to ensure we have uh, consistency within the tests so it's coming at the same speed all the time or roughly the same speed as, as, as much as we can control anyway um, and then the player reacts once the shuttle is fired to hit the shuttle and we are measuring the head speed of the racket during that test Okay, so they're done. Now it's E-Zone control test time. The control test is a simplistic test. We've thought many, many times if there was any other better way of creating a test where we, we are uh, looking, focusing on the control of the racket and able to score it, and we so far haven't come up with anything better. So this, con this control test is essentially a test where we have 14 shots taken you're not seeing all the shots um, on the control video we, we generally film half or less of the shots taken the green bucket here scores maximum the gray scores slightly less and anything in the net or out scores nothing at all So what do we conclude in respect of the court performance of this racket? Well, um, we've tested, I think, two or three spiders now over the last two or three years, and 
Um, this one is no, not that different to any of the others really. Its primary strength is control. It has it offers a really decent amount of control. Um, but just looking through the E-Zone page here and also looking at the court testing that we've done on this racket, it's, um, uh, yeah, I think I think control is really where it's reasonably good. Um, it does its repulsion levels are not bad, um, and it's actually it's okay in defence. I think smash power is, is probably going to be you can only really get the full potential out of, it, out of its smash power if you can really get this shaft to start bending a little bit. <coughs> Beg your pardon. Um, so. Where does it leave us? Well, overhead shots for this racket um, are reasonably good. It has decent control levels, but it doesn't smash that hard. So you may consider it um, for singles. Um, just trying to think about 99 pounds. Would it be better than an Astrox racket? Would it be, you know, um, no, I don't think so. I think if its airspeed is just a little bit too slow, a little bit sluggish in the air, and that would put it behind the Astrox racket, so I can't recommend it above those. For doubles, I know it's not. So unfortunately for the Spider Mark II, it's a, it's a no. Um, it doesn't smash hard enough. It's not quick enough in the air. And while it does offer good control, reasonable repulsion, and has reasonable abilities in other areas, there's just other rackets that are better than it for doubles at half the price. Nowhere near the quality, nowhere near the finish, though. If you want to compete with the finishing quality of this, you're looking at 130, 150-pound Victor rackets, goose and rackets, even goose and rackets are 105 pounds, 110 pounds. Nothing else even gets close to the fit and finish, but in terms of performance, as obviously we have Yonex, we have Leaning, um, and there are just too many other rackets close to this price bracket that would deliver better performance. So it's difficult for us to say, go and try it. If you want the full-on review of every single shot area, so smash, drive, overhead, control, repulsion, um, defense, you need to go to the racket in zone where we test all of that in great detail and have a members only video. If you're not familiar with the E Zone, there will be a video tour following this video. For all of you who have used this racket, will use this racket, please leave reviews. If you are E Zone members, leave reviews on the E Zone. If you are not E Zone members, leave reviews on the social platforms you're visiting. Um, it's so important for other people to get some idea. I mean, people, the whole point of badminton racket review is to bring information to people. And the people who can, you know, the way to accelerate that is for all badminton players to take part in that process so that the world is more informed, the community is more informed as to how rackets perform. So please do leave your own views. We really welcome them. You know, the only time we're not going to welcome people's views is when people just make brainless comments that you sort of read it and think, well, okay, I understand you may not like badminton racket review or you may not like whatever it is you don't like. That's fine because who's ever managed to please everyone? It's impossible to do so. But at the very least, if you're going to say something, make it useful. <laughs> I just don't understand why you waste your time making a comment that's just totally useless. It just seems unintelligent to me. Anyway, um, I think you've got the idea. Do press a like button. Do press a sh uh, share button. Thanks so, so much for all the support we're receiving around the world. Really, really appreciated. And I think we're done here today. We will see you on the next video.